good morning so i've been watching too much booktube and i decided that it would be a good idea to do a 24 hour readathon and so now i am awake and it is almost midnight it's 11 55 if you can see that i can't turn it the right way <laughs> okay well i can show you on my uh phone there you go it is 11:55. And I am just about ready to start at midnight a 24 hour readathon. And essentially, I am planning on reading for 24 hours straight without sleeping. I prepped for this. I went to bed at 2 o'clock and I just woke up right before this. So I am hopefully ready. I have a bookshelf of possibilities. These are all fiction book possibilities. These are all graphic novel possibilities, nonfiction book possibilities, and then poetry book possibilities. And I also have some books that are um, on my iPad to read in ebook format. And then I also have some audiobooks. It's been almost an hour. And I've made it about halfway through this poetry book. You can see I've been marking some of the poems I like the most going through. It's pretty good. Um, and I am starting to get hungry and it is one in the morning, but I also slept since two o'clock. I have now eaten some, I guess you'd call it breakfast, although it's at 1 a.m. <laughs> and I am now an hour and a half in. I started the romance audiobook, Not My Type. So far, it's a little on the spicy side for me, but I really like the character diversity. And now I am going to get back to All Along You Were Blooming. So far, my 24 hours is going really well. It is 1.40 in the morning and I am very awake, so that is a good sign. Hello, hello, checking in. It is now 1.14 and I have, it's only 1.14? I thought I finished an hour and a half. I must not have set the timer correctly. Okay, resetting the timer because it seems like I did something wrong. I am an hour and 15 minutes in because I, I don't know how that can be possible. I'm starting to lose it already and it's only an hour and 15 minutes in. Well, anyway, something weird happened with the time, but I'm checking along, doing just fine. It's 1.17. And I have now finished my first book, All Along You Were Blooming. You can see I liked it pretty well. I tabbed a variety of poems and lines that I liked in the book. Um, I think the only thing that I would say is I'm not religious and this book has quite a bit of religious references in it. And so for me, I would say this is probably a four star read. I was interested in reading this because my best online friend sends me quotes from her Instagram page. Uh, Morgan Harper Nichols is a Instagram poet and so I had read some inspiring things from her and was interested in reading more of what she had to say. I'll read a couple of the lines that I liked um, to you guys. So let's see. 
I liked the line that said, let today be the day you make the mindful decision to find joy in the ordinary places. Another one that I liked was, I do not have to be strong all of the time. I am not a burden because I have burdens and because there is a lot on my mind. Which means a lot to me because I have both mental and physical illness and I felt like, um, I like the idea that I am not a burden just because I have burdens. And then look, there's this nice little heart illustration on the page. I liked the heart illustration. I thought that was really pretty. And then I liked the passage. It is more than okay if giving your all means starting small and taking it day by day. And then I liked You'll certainly face unknowns, but you will not face them alone. All around you, there are people facing many of the same fears and many hiding it, hide it without realizing it behind how are you's and I am fine's. And then live as a stone in rushing water, grounded no matter the current. Good morning. So I have now finished three books. I finished the All Along You Were Blooming poetry book that I talked to you about earlier. And then the Gibber graphic novel that I had started, I finished. And that one was pretty good, but not as good as the original book. I would definitely read The Giver more so than read the graphic novel. And then I also finished Not My Type the audiobook that I was listening to and I think you saw in just a couple of clips ago that while I was listening to that audiobook I went and dropped by the grocery store and picked up some junk food because I needed some junk food to make it through the night and I would say I pretty successfully made it through the night um, but I did doze a little bit while listening to my audiobook but I learned, and this was like quite surprising because I was like trying to figure out how my watch had got me at an hour and 20 minutes and I'd also listened to 40 minutes of an audiobook and I was somehow an hour off on my time and it was supposed to be done at 11.15 instead of 1.15 after stopping several times for filming or 11.15 instead of 12.15 and when I'd stopped several times for filming and I was just like baffled so confused and then I was heating up my popcorn and I don't even think this clip ended up getting recorded uh, I think I forgot to press the record button on the camera but I was <laughs> looking at the um, 
the clock on the microwave and the oven and it said 407 and I looked at my watch and it said 307. My watch automatically updates because it's linked to my phone and then I realized that it's daylight savings today, so it's actually 25 hours instead of 24 hours. I um, started listening to The Matzah Ball, which is a um, Jewish romance uh, centered around Hanukkah, and it's also really interesting because the main female character, it's a female male romance, and the main female character in the romance story has the same chronic illness condition that I have. So it's been really interesting to read about her journey and read about her story and find references to my condition and what's going on in her life is very similar to things that I experience. Uh, the Not My Type book was really good for accessibility, although there were some things in how consent was pictured in the book that weren't my favorite. And then, like, not even just in, you know, like, bedroom circumstances, but just in, like, general life circumstances, like, I understand the, like, banter type relationship, but that's also not, like, really my, like, cup of tea. And so, it was hard for me because the female main character expressed that she didn't like a nickname that the male main character gave her and then he continued to call her that the entire book even though she'd said she didn't like it and to me that's just not like a respectful way to have a relationship um and maybe she was joking when she said she didn't like it and so it's just like a banter thing but it just rubbed me the wrong way and there were a few things like that where they're just like were ideas expressed that were like ignored or not taken seriously and then in the like spicy scenes that they had um there wasn't discussion of like having a safe word or anything like that um so then characters are saying no like i don't want to do this i don't like this i like want to stop and not being listened to and I really didn't like that. So for me, um, those couple of things definitely detracted from the story. So that was not my type and I thought it was a good story overall and if it was just based on the diversity and the overall like storyline and everything, I probably would have been more like five stars on it but based on the way the characters interacted with one another and the actual romance and how I liked that. And then also the book was a little on the spicy side for my taste. Um, and so it was probably a three and a half star for me. I just got a puppy. <laughs> you want to see my puppy? Hi, Jamal. Come here. Hi. Good morning. How are you? You going to go on a walk? I can put in an audiobook and take you on a walk. Yeah, I'll give you some breakfast and take you on a walk. Okay, well, doggy duty calls. Um, but yeah, I am listening to the matzo ball now and I'm enjoying that one so far. I just started rolling. Let's see. This is his favorite routine after he's gotten his uh, walk and his breakfast. There he goes. Are you a roller? Yeah, are you going to do the full roll or no? Oh, there you go. <laughs> 
This is his happy boy routine. Are you done? He's got his roll on. You don't like being watched, huh? You're not used to this much attention. You go drink your water. <laughs> We're back from our walk. I don't know if you can tell if I'm rosy at all, but uh, it was cold outside. I checked the temperature on my phone because I was curious and it said it was 39 degrees. That's Fahrenheit um, in the United States, so. Very cold, very chilly. Hello, hello, long time no check-in. So I have now finished two more books. I finished The Matzo Ball on audiobook, and I really liked the MECFS uh, representation. I think for me, it just wasn't my favorite tropes in terms of a romance book. And so for that pushed my rating down from like a five star to maybe like a four and a half star. Then the other book I read was Reasons to Stay Alive by Matt Hagg. Um, I didn't love that one. It was definitely a lot of, I don't know if triggering is the right word, but definitely difficult stuff to read. Um, and I didn't feel like I got for me, as someone who has struggled with both anxiety and depression, which are the two main like conditions discussed in the book, I didn't feel like I got a ton out of it. I liked the end where he talked about um, comments that people made on Twitter for reasons to stay alive. I also loved that in the reasons to stay alive there were at least three people who mentioned books or having a TBR or having books still to read. <laughs> I thought that was great. Um, and then he also talked about things that make his depression and anxiety worse and then things that tend to make his mental health better. And I liked both of those parts. Those were right at the end of the book. But I felt like, you know, and for a relatively short book, it was only 256 pages, I think. Um, I overall didn't find that much of it compelling and that much of it useful to me. It was just like maybe 10 pages that I was like, yes. Hi, I just finished Lock and Key, Welcome to Lovecraft by Joe Hill and Gabrielle Rodriguez. I thought it was pretty good, but it was definitely graphic. Um, yeah, I it stuck pretty well to what the show goes through. I'm trying to think, because it definitely, definitely doesn't cover the first season. I think it covers the first few episodes of the first season. So I'm curious, I have comics books two and three, and I wonder how much that covers. But I would say if you like the Lock and Key show, you probably would like the Lock and Key graphic novels. Um, I would probably rate it like a four star. Definitely very graphic, but good. Hello. It's 11 o'clock, which means that I've technically been doing this for, there we go, ah! technically been trying to do this for 24 hours, and I don't know that I can function for any longer. <laughs> So, I was gonna try and stay up till midnight or 1 a.m. and actually be like, I completed a full 24 hours, including stopping for 
videotaping and everything else, but I've been essentially non-functional and not processing anything since about 8.20, I think, was the last, like, picture I took that I was functional. I think what I'm gonna do, because I don't think I really made 24 hours, which I guess is, like, nobody makes it 24 hours in these videos, and I was like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna sleep before I do it, and I'm gonna make it 24 hours. Although I knew with my chronic illness that it was gonna be really, really hard to make it 24 hours, and I made it. What well, is eight o'clock after? Oh, I guess 8.20 was really 9.20. So, made it 21 hours. That's pretty sad to make it 21 hours and then not be able to make it the last three hours. Ah, what a bummer. Gonna have to try again sometime. But, um, I'll probably read the last three hours tomorrow and see if I can finish. The sun and her flowers, maybe the other poetry book. Maybe some audio, or maybe the uh, one for all. Like, I won't finish it, but I can start it. I think you guys deserve the last, like, at least three hours, but then I was pausing the video to, or pausing the, like, timer to do video and stuff during the challenge, so an extra hour or two. So I think there's probably still, like, four or five hours that I could insert tomorrow. Um, when I'm more cognizant. These are all the books I read. This is how many pages I read. So this is the one that I finished part of it. I didn't count any pages from it, and then there were none or the soulmate equation because I wasn't cognizant at that point. So I made it through a total of 1,578 pages in 1,024 minutes or 17 hours, which means I owe you guys seven hours of reading time tomorrow. Good morning. It is 10 a.m. the next day, and I am planning on getting the next seven hours in today if I can. It's hailing. Hello, hello, hello. It has been... <laughs> Cosmo is really interested in me filming. Say hi, Cosmo. Say hi. You're very cute. Okay, I'm gonna go back to filming. Um, so it is now, oh, Cosmo's laying down. It is now several days later and in my original 24 hour readathon, I finished just over 17 hours of actual reading time, which I feel like isn't a, is a little unfair considering I was listening to my books at double time, which meant that every once in a while I had to go back and like re-listen to a part. But if I'm re-listening to it, it's like I still listened to it and then listened to it again. So it was like, I don't know. I feel like I did more than 17 hours, but I'm gonna say that I did 17 hours during the readathon and then that meant I had seven hours left to do, and so I figured I'd finish out my seven hours and see how much I could get done in terms of reading in 24 hours total. So in the last couple of days, I've listened to an audiobook that was just under four and a half hours. So that was The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave, and that was 303 pages. Um, listening on double time, it was 265 minutes, or just under four and a half hours. Um, and Essentially, that one was, I don't know how much detail to give because I don't want to spoil anything when it comes to, th I mean, I don't want to spoil anything when it comes to any books, but you have to be especially careful with thrillers. So the last thing he told me is about a wife whose husband disappears and then she is now responsible for taking care of his 16 year old daughter. And the last thing he leaves her with is a note that says protect her overall. Um, I really enjoyed this one. It definitely kept my attention and I didn't love the ending, although I didn't hate it. I just was kind of like, 
it's pretty good. Um, so overall, this was a four star read for me. Pretty good, pretty engaging, pretty interesting, um, which is actually pretty good for me because usually thrillers aren't my like top genre. So I thought that was a good one. Um, and now I have two and a half more hours, just two and a half more hours to go. I started this vlog on Saturday the 5th. It is now Friday the 11th, so it's been, I mean, I guess I say I started it on the 5th, but it was like 11 at night on the 5th, so it was basically the 6th. But either way, I'm at almost a week since I started this vlog, and it's a 24 hour readathon, so the 24 hour readathon should have finished in 24 hours. So I've been really struggling to get that last hour and a half in. I've just been really busy with uh, work and getting life stuff done, so I haven't gotten the well, and then also I haven't been feeling very well with my illness, so I'm like, I could listen to some audiobooks, but I haven't been wanting to read a physical book, but then I wanted to read a physical book for finishing out this vlog, and so, anyway, long story short, I still have an hour and a half of, like, time to get to 24 hours in terms of, like, actually reading for 24 hours, and I am determined to finish that today, so I decided I'm gonna read One for All by Lily Lanoff. Before I leave, I will go through the other two books that I finished. So in working on the last few hours, um, I finished The Sun and Her Flowers by Rupi Carr, and The Princess Saves Herself in This One by Amanda Lovelace. Um, I'm gonna read a couple of quotes from each of them that I liked. So The Sun and Her Flowers, I liked this one that said, Look down at your body, whisper, there is no home like you, thank you. And then the other one that I liked was, I stand on the sacrifices of a million women before me, thinking, what can I do to make this mountain taller so the women after me can see farther legacy? So, I liked those two from uh, The Sun and Her Flowers by Rupi Carr, and then The Princess Saves Herself in this one. Um, the first one that I liked was a quote, well, it was talking about millennials, so this poem, I'll just read the whole poem, um, says, we are the generation you gave participant trophies to, we are the generation you made wear helmets, elbow pads, and knee pads, we are the generation you gave censored CD and PG movies to, we are the generation you spent years overprotecting and then threw to the wolves, now we are the generation running on nothing but coffee and three hours of sleep. We are the generation working minimum wage jobs with college degrees. We are the generation making just enough money to survive. We are the generation you didn't want to see fail that ensured that we did millennials. So I thought that one was really powerful. And then I liked this one that says, repeat after me, you owe no one your forgiveness, except maybe yourself. So I liked both of these. Um, I think The Sun and Her Flowers by Ruby Carr, I'd probably give like a four, four and a half stars. And The Princess Saves Herself in this one, I'd probably give like a three and a half, four stars.
for final check-in and outro. So I finished my last hour and 38 minutes and I read One for All by Lily Lanoff. I really enjoy the representation in this book. The main character has POTS, which is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, and I like seeing how that impacts her but how it doesn't stop her from having big dreams and big goals. Um, so I think that is really interesting. But right now I'm a little confused about what's going on and having trouble like following the story and some of the pieces which makes it a lot less enjoyable. So I'm about halfway in and right now I would say it's sitting at like a three and a half four star read for me but we will see where it ends up being once I finish it. Over the last seven hours which I've done over many days um, I read 680 pages in um, the remaining seven hours and so that brings my total for 24 hours to 2258 pages in 24 hours. Um, I thought that was really, really high. That is probably the most you will ever see me finish in a 24 hour readathon vlog because I was reading a lot of poetry books and a lot of graphic novels and I chose a lot of shorter books so I finished nine and only read like a quarter or so of the one for all book. That was a good first attempt at a 24-hour readathon, so I am happy. I am also really ecstatic about the number of books that I made it through and the number of pages I made it through. Um, if you have any other challenges you'd like to see me do, definitely comment down below and let me know. Thank you so very much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye!